is Daniel Wee. I'm a librarian working in collection curation and engagement at State Library Victoria. Uh, and part of that work is with the MV Anderson Chess Collection. The MV Anderson collection actually came into the library uh, from a period about 1959 to 1966 from a, a donor, and that donor is Magnus Victor Anderson. And he was a, an accountant and a lover of, of art uh, as well as chess. Um, so in that time, uh, from 59 to 66, he actually did donate material to the library and he actually worked on the collection himself, cataloguing. Um, but in his, uh, at his death in 1966, he ended up donating about 6,700 volumes in total. Um, and then from there, we've managed to add uh, to, to the collection. So now we have about 13,000 items uh, from books, magazines, um, tournament reports, um, and then earlier uh, material as well from the 15th and 16th century uh, to give a sort of a complete picture of that. Yeah, so it's a really important collection. Um, the Oxford Companion of Chess mentions the State Library of Victoria as one of the top three collections in the world behind, well, along with the J.G. White collection in Cleveland, Ohio, as well as uh, a collection in uh, the Royal Library in, in The Hague in the Netherlands. We do have an open access collection and then a closed collection um, of rare materials. So since the invention of the printing press by Gutenberg, uh, there were books being produced on, on chess and we have, we're lucky to have some of those in the collection. But the great thing about the MV Anderson collection is not just about the rare material, it, it is incredibly diverse um, from, yeah, from, you know, incunable material um, to, you know, a, a few months ago we did have a, some chess stuff down here and we had, you know, like a, a Phantom Menace Star Wars um, set uh, chessboard as well as a Simpsons chessboard. Um, so those kinds of things. So we're, you know, it, it is pretty much available to everyone. And one of the things you'll find if you, if you go and browsing through the stacks here is that you've got, you know, serious tournament records. Um, you will have, you know, yeah, serious chess material dispersed with children's material as well. And, and that's what it's about, you know, is to sort of encourage younger people to, to start playing chess. The past few years since the Queen's Gambit, there has been you know, a lot of interest in, in the game of chess, which is fantastic. Fantastic not only for, for the game of chess, but for the library as well. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to engage with um, uh, an audience um, that don't always, uh, haven't always had, I guess, a, a strong relationship with the game of chess. So we do have a, a number of different people that engage with it from the serious people who come in and grab a tournament report and you know you do a complete game to students like, like you'll see around today, um, as well as just general members of the public. When, when I think back to my own childhood, uh, you know, the library was very much a place um, was, was after school care effectively before you know that became illegal to do that um, so you know chess was sort of a game that you would go and play it was a quiet place it was studious um, it requires you know critical thinking um, it requires I guess uh, a certain degree of, of understanding of tactics mathematics literature those kinds of things so you know even though it's not the printed form or it's in manuscript form um, it ha it's, it's always sort of had a place in the library. This was actually the place, the Queen's Hall, where people would play chess up until, um, you know, around 2000 when the Queen's Hall was closed down. And then what we found is that basically from there, um, when we did a, a redevelopment, a renovation, it went up to um, a, a mezzanine where it was very much open to the public and it became a huge sort of thing. Um, it beca became incredibly popular. Um, and what you would find is that you, in the mezzanine area, you would um, find, you know, say lots of international students and students in there playing with uh, the people who traditionally use the collection. Um, so, you know, previously in the old days, you would have a, usually a man would come in by himself, sit by himself, grab a tournament report or a book of openings uh, and sit there and just play by himself. Uh, very rarely would you find that they would actually play a game with other people. When it moved into the mezzanine area, it was open and, and we found that um, people started to engage with it. And then those people who would sit there and play a game by themselves were being approached by younger people, uh, young girls, women, um, young students, and it became a, a real thing. Um, you know, it was actually quite exciting. And, you know, you, it wouldn't 
you would on occasion have you know 30 people sitting around a table cheering and you know it was it was quite it was pretty cool you know very you know uh, Queen's Gambit kind of uh, thing after the redevelopment it's come back to its home in the Ian Potter Queen's Hall in the mezzanine um, and you know it's basically when the Queen's Hall opened um, this was where the chest was going to be and then as soon as it opened uh, you know we had lockdowns so we haven't had an opportunity to really engage with the public with the chess collections uh, and let them know that they're here so you know people were coming in to play chess but they also use the collection as well um, and I did mention you know we have lots of students come in um, and they're using not just only the internet but the resources that are available um, and usually they use it as a bit of downtime, you know, the, the opportunity to play with each other, uh, play with strangers. Um, but yeah, d definitely, I mean, you know, in terms of accessibility, the library is great. You know, it's a, it's a incredibly democratic institution. Anyone's welcome. Um, and it just so happens that, you know, people come to, to the library to play chess.